Hey everyone, Percy Jules here. So today I decided to do a little video on how to install native instrument plugins in Studio One in particular, but basically it's very similar in any other DAW. Um, I actually already did a video on how to install uh, plugins in Studio One a little while ago. Today I wanted to do one specifically about native instrument plugins and why because of a question of a viewer who apparently has some issues with installing Contact 5 in Studio One. So I decided to do this little video and hopefully this might help this person and anyone else who's, um, who is trying to install native instrument plugins. Uh, by the way, first of all, let me say that I'm in no way affiliated or anything with native instruments or with Presonus for that matter. This is just a response to a question and that's all it is. Okay, let's get to it. Now, the first thing to do when you want to download Native Instrument plugins is obviously to go to their website. Okay, so go to native-instruments.com. On the website, go to support and then go to downloads. All right, now on the downloads page, the first thing you will see is an option to download Native Access. Now, what is Native Access? As they call it, Native Access is a download and activation tool. This is what you use to download and to activate and basically to manage all your native instrument plugins on your computer with. So I would strongly recommend downloading this first. So choose the, uh, the appropriate um, version. So either Mac or Windows, download it and we'll go from there. Okay, now once you've downloaded and installed Native Access, then launch the application and log into your Native Instrument account. Now, then you should see something like this. So these are all the Native Instrument products installed on my computer. So install products. If you go to not installed, you should see everything that is linked to your Native Instrument account, but not yet installed on your computer. And available updates, well, that is pretty self-explanatory. And look at that, I've got a Contact, 5, Contact Player 5 update available to me. Now, before you start downloading any plugin, I would highly recommend that you first manage your locations. So let's go to this uh, avatar looking icon right here. Click it and then go to preferences. Now here you can see all your locations. Now the first location is the download location. So when you download anything from Native Instruments, this is where it is downloaded to, obviously. You can actually change this location by simply clicking browse and then choosing any folder on your computer. Okay. Now the next one is the application location. This is where the actual applications are stored in. Um, it is recommended by Native Instruments that you set this to the default location. So basically don't touch it. Otherwise you might run into some issues. Um, next one is the content location. Don't confuse this with the application location. Uh, let me give you an example. I've got an application called Battery, which is a, a drum plugin, basically. Um, the application itself is probably a, a relatively small file that is stored in the application location. This plugin also uses a lot of uh, loops and samples. Now, all those loops and samples together, that is a much larger file. Um, it is kind of recommended, not just for native instrument products, but for, you know, in general, that you store these kind of files, these kind of content files in another location. So not on your system drive, but use a dedicated hard drive for this. Um, so that is what you could do also here. Click browse and choose another location if you want to. Now, then we have the VST location, so 64 and 32 bit. I am on a Windows computer. On a Windows computer, you can choose custom locations. If you're on a Mac, you cannot do that. It is fixed. All right. Now, once you've done all that, then you can start downloading all your plugins and it will kind of be, um, you know, automatically be uh, organized for you. All right. Now, Obviously, these locations are very important in, in the context of this question because you have to uh, tell your host application, so your host sequencer, in this case we're talking about Studio One, but basically it could be any DAW, you have to tell it what these locations are because it has to know where to get all the information from. It is in these locations, all right? Okay, now what if? And this is very relevant to the question that was asked. 
What if you have already installed a plugin from Native Instruments, but you don't know where? So you don't know in which location it is stored. Well, with Native Access, that is actually very easy to figure out. So I just talked about battery. Let's take that as an example again. Let's say that I've installed battery, but I don't know where. Okay, now what you do is first find that application. Here you can see a picture representing battery. So what you do is just click that image. Okay, and you can see some more information sliding in from the right. Let's go to installation path and here you can see all the locations. So that's how simple it is. And once we know those locations, let's go over to our host sequencer. Okay, so now we are in our host sequencer, in this case, Studio One. And now we have to tell Studio One where to search to find battery, uh, so that it can add it to the list of plugins, obviously. Because if we open the browser and go to instruments and go to native instruments, you can see that battery isn't here yet, simply because I haven't told it uh, the location where battery resides. Okay, now to do that, let's go to Studio One, go to Options, go to Locations, and go to VST Plugins. All right, now here you can see all the locations I have told Studio One to search whenever it starts up. Uh, the location where battery lives isn't here yet, so to add this location, we have to simply click Add. And here it is. So this PC, C drive, program files, native instruments. This is the folder where battery lives. So now we simply have to click select folder and let's click, uh, here you can see the location by the way. Now let's click apply and keep your eye on the right. And there it is, there is battery. So as you can see, I've just added the location and Studio One has searched that location and now it has found battery and added it to the list of plugins. So that's all there is to it. Um, I hope this helps. I hope this helps uh, this viewer that asked this question. I hope this helps anyone who is trying to install any uh, Native Instruments plugins to Studio One or any other DAW. So again, I hope this helps. Um, thank you for watching and I will talk to you soon.